Welcome to The Photographer Show, where we talk to you, the everyday photographers in the Photo Focus community, about your love of photography and dig into some of the fun, nerdy stuff we all love about the art and craft of photography. My name is Scott Weinkiewicz, and I'm joined today again by my co-host, Lori Novak. Hi, Hello. Lori. Hello. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm excited to see the, the images you chose this week. Yeah, yeah. It's always <laughs> a nice surprise. Um, so before we dive in, the Photographer Show is presented by our friends at Tamron. Be sure to check out Instant Savings on select Tamron lenses for your DSLR or mirrorless camera. Go to tamron-usa.com. And today we are talking with another Scott, Scott Norris. Hi, Scott. Hello. <laughs> How is everybody? <laughs> How's it going? Awesome. How's it going? It's going well. Great, great. Uh, can you tell everybody who's listening, watching a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, you already know my name. Um, <laughs> I've been shooting <laughs> photography for, oh gosh, I think I got my first SLR in 82. Uh, spent a lot of time in the darkroom, uh, in inordinate amount of time in the darkroom in high school. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, got a degree in photojournalism, never has never have worked as a photojournalist in my life, but <laughs> I have a degree in photography, so I can say that at least, um, got back into digital in the early two thousands when, uh, it became apparent that the, uh, it was getting as equivalent to film. So I could start doing the things that I could do in the dark room. I could do it in the light. <laughs> um, so that's photography. What I do for a living, I do 3D animation, motion graphics, special effects, and things like that. So what's nice is I've boring been using... The, I'm, I'm sorry? The boring stuff. All yeah. the boring stuff, right? Oh, yeah. It's fun. But I think the nice thing is, is I approach my processing differently than a lot of photographers because with the, the yep. motion graphics, I approach it with creating something from nothing. And so right. I don't have a problem about going into photographs and doing some stuff that most photog photographers might not even think about. So, right. But uh, that's that's me, I guess. Any other questions about that? Awesome. <laughs> well, so so you mentioned that you're um, <laughs> I was just kidding, by the way. I think you realize that. But I was just kidding sure. about the being boring stuff. Um, <laughs> it's actually really exciting stuff. <laughs> um, so you mentioned your first camera is 1982, uh, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your first camera? Well, my very first camera was uh, was a, a Canon AE1 program. Yeah. Um, nice. I had that for maybe a year uh, in photography class in high school. Hey, nice. My <laughs> photography teacher had us all use the same camera so he could teach us the same. And that was a Pentax right. K1000, which I uh, love that. That camera was, it's a tank. Uh, yep. There's very little electronics. Um, the meter, just the light meter was just a, a, a an arrow, a little needle that went up and down. Yeah. It was really nice. Uh, and then um, because I wanted to, to, when I got to college, uh, I wanted to shoot uh, the football games. And they the yearbook staff had a 300 millimeter 28 Nikon lens. So I said, well, it's time for me to switch to Nikon. So my first, <laughs> I think my first, what I consider my main camera was an F2, which is right over there. Cool. Uh, nice. Then I got an FM2. So those are my first two SLRs. Awesome. And so right now you're shooting with a DSLR or a mirrorless? Uh, DSLR, and it is a very old digital. I still use my D700. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, awesome. that's not something that you hear you know about. That you no, hear and too it's, often. it's awesome because lately I keep seeing people of, who are like upgrading to the latest and greatest, and, and they're yeah. expecting. And, and not everybody is this way, but some people that are out there that I see, you know, go through my stream and, and what they're saying and why they're getting the camera is like, you don't even need that much. Like you don't, you're not selling, yeah. you're not selling, you're not making billboards, you're not, you know, like, but they feel like they have to have this latest and greatest. And for whatever reason, I, I don't, I don't get it because I'm not that way, but I, I know there's you know, that's how the industry is. And a lot of it is that way. And a lot of it is marketing. You know, of course, they mm -hmm. want you to buy the latest and greatest. Every so to hear that years. somebody's still shooting that. Yeah. yeah, right. Who can afford that? Yeah. I don't know. Now, yeah, I, I, I love the camera, but it is old. It's near the end of its life. I mean, it's 12 years old. Uh, yeah. I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly when I bought it, but the D700 was released in 2008. 
Um, so, uh, and it's 12.1 megapixels, which for the most part is fine, but I'm getting requests for larger prints now. Uh, and so I have to up res, uh, when they want that. Right. Uh, there's right. some great software for that, but, uh, right. I'm still, it's not out of camera. So I am looking to upgrade, probably going mirrorless. I'm looking at the, the Z mm. series. Uh, but because I'm going to have to get new lenses, uh, I'm open to other suggestions. Uh, and if anybody wants to like to give me something lenses. to use, I can, I'm willing <laughs> exactly. to switch. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you don't have to use new lenses right away. You can use the sure. FTZ adapter and make slowly make the transition. That's what I wind up doing. I'm now using the Nikon Z6, which you see me on right now, and a Nikon Z7 II, which is, um, somewhere else in my office, but <laughs> um, I'm using a mixture of Z lenses and F mount lenses mm -hmm. as I transition fully, slowly. Um, so you can do that. Uh, I love the Z7 II. Uh, I love the Z6, but it's better on video than the Z Z7 II. Mm -hmm. um, but it, being that you're already using the, the D700, switching to the a Z series camera, you will not feel a difference other than having to use a lens adapter for a little sure. bit. Sure. Well, and so. I, I've never been a gearhead when it comes to, to stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when people start talking about all this stuff and what it does, I'm like, does it, does it help me take good pictures? Notice right. I didn't say, does it take good pictures? Because cameras don't take any pictures. Right. <laughs> right. It's a tool. <laughs> um, yep. But I, yep. just, I just upgraded my kit lens. I've been using a kit lens. It's a, the wow. 24 to 85. Uh, mm -hmm. Zoom three, and, probably a three five to five six. Yeah, or something. and it is a crappy lens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good for a lot of things, but when you're getting started, getting into making everything in the image sharp, I've been realizing lately that my landscapes are there's uh, chromatic aberration on the edges yeah. and soft, and I said, okay, I gotta I gotta do something. So I spent a hundred bucks and got a uh, what is this? So a uh, 28 to 105. So mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. You, but you notice think, the difference you, like right away, don't you? Oh yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. I, I think if you tried, if you like rented the Z6 II or the Z7 II and rented even the 24 to um, 70 F4 lens, that's the native Z mount, you'd probably be super happy with it just from hearing you know, what you're currently using. Sure. I, I've read it. Probably be super, super happy. Uh, I did a couple um, events where they wanted me to shoot some stuff, and I got a uh, D850 with, uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember what lens. I got two lenses. I don't know if it was a Nikon or if it was Tamron or Sigma. I don't remember, but it was a 24 to 70 and 7200 to 8. And yep. the whole time I was having, <laughs> I was saying, do you think they'd miss these if I took them? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because the, yeah. The, it's night and day. The, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the two eight, um, the two eight, seventy to two hundred two eight is available for the Z series already. I'm not sure about the seventy to two hundred yet, but um, the Z seven two has the same sensor as the Nikon D eight fifty. That was my transition. I went from the D eight fifty to the Z seven two as my primary body, um, and it felt natural. And the results are exactly what I was getting with the D eight fifty. I'm very happy. Yeah. With it. I'm, I think that's the way everything's going to go. Uh, and the nice thing is, is if I find a nice, you know, uh, Canon vintage lens somewhere, I just get the adapter and I'm not worried about losing, yep. you know, the focal length will be the same. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple yep. adapters for my camera for some old, uh, oh gosh, I think it's a contacts, contact lens or something. And it works okay, but it, I can't get it as sharp as I'd like. It, it's a 500 millimeter mirror um, fixed uh, lens. So it's an F, nice. I think it's an F8. Yeah. Uh, and it's okay, yeah, but it's still, yeah. it's it's soft because with the connection and all that, I just can never get it focused, but right. it's fun to play with. Right. Yeah, yeah. Those I've always wanted to get one of those just for photographing the moon and stuff sometimes, like putting on a, a, t a extender and, mm. you know. It's got a very, not even photographing it, just seeing it closer. Yeah, even it's got a very <laughs> weird uh, um, bokeh. It's like it's a donut mm -hmm. because of the mirror yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah, that'd be There's, fun. Those yeah. are fun. Yeah. Um. So let's so let's let's dive into um some of the work that you do. Sure. So you have a mixture of photography genres in your portfolio. Um, and you're we're gonna look at 
I would say three of them today, three of those styles sure. today. What is your favorite type of genre photography to do overall? Uh, it, it varies by my mood. Um, I, I allow how I feel and what's in front of me to kind of dictate what I'm shooting. Um, so it, it's really hard to pin down. I have a tendency to go minimal, um, mm -hmm. at least recently. Uh, I just like making things as simple as possible. Uh, whether that's black and white or color, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I have a tendency to be closer up and not the really wide vistas. Um, so it's really hard to, it's hard to pin down. I mean, uh, landscape, <laughs> um, still life. I don't do a lot of portrait, um, very little of that. And I recently, I haven't done a lot of architecture as well. I mean, I do pieces of, but not the big buildings and things like that. So mm -hmm. it really is depending on where I am. I mean, if I'm in the middle of the woods, I'm, I'm looking for leaves right. and things on the ground. I'm not standing and getting the big vistas. That just doesn't appeal to me as, as, uh, as much as the, the details. Yeah, definitely, definitely more fine art um, style than mm -hmm. than landscape style. Yeah. Really um, cool. So, of all the things that you photographed so far, because you've got a wide range as well of just subject matter, um, what's your favorite thing that you've photographed ever in in your entire? Oh, collection? you're asking me to pick my favorite child. Okay, let's do that. You pick yours next, Scott. <laughs> let, let's let's rephrase that. Aside from your children, <laughs> what is your favorite thing you photograph? <laughs> oh man, um, there's one image that I uh, that I that I have um, that is extremely minimal. It's Lake Michigan. I put the horizon dead center. It was a foggy day. Uh, and it's just water and sky, uh, and the sky is it's cloudy, and I process it in, in such a way that the sky has very little detail in it. So you get a little bit of the ripple of the water because Lake Michigan was absolutely, um, well, not absolutely, but it was very calm that day, and I tinted it blue, mm -hmm. and I just it's uh, it's a three to one aspect ratio, so I can print it large. I've printed it a couple times, and I usually do it at two to one ratio. Because getting a canvas that's 90 by 30 is, <laughs> I don't have a place to put it in my house, but uh, <laughs> I printed it at 60 right, by right. 30 a couple times. And that's probably, it's called uh, Limitless. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite image. And that's, on, and that's in your portfolio on your site for everybody to go yeah. check out? Cool. All right. So be sure, watch this first and then go to Scott's yeah. site and check it out. ScottNorthPhotography.com. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Um, so... Coming from someone, uh, somebody who has a an animation background, you know that's what you do for a living. I'm curious if your typical editing style or like the, the software you use is different than most photographers, or if you still use the same software but maybe just adapt adopt some of your animations, just like you do, like as you mentioned earlier, like adopting some of that into your editing. So, do you use? Photoshop, Lightroom, what, what is your, your typical editing? Look uh, well, like? up, up until about six years ago, I never used Lightroom. Uh, I, cause I, I, I've right. been using Photoshop. Uh, I was introduced to Photoshop in a photo lab in college in 89. So I've been using Photoshop off and on since version one. Um, don't call me an expert cause I'm not, <laughs> but, uh, I, I can get around the software pretty well. So, but I've been using Photoshop, and that's what I used exclusively. That and Bridge to uh, to to catalog things and keyword and things like that. But uh, uh, now my process is I I open Lightroom, do some very basic adjustments, um, you know, straightening horizons or what have you, and uh, some basic color corrections, and then it goes to Photoshop, and uh, then I just go to town. I I will. On average, I'll probably spend an hour per image. Uh, and if if I get an image that was done so well in camera that I don't have much processing, it feels weird to me. <laughs> I just I want to process the images. To me, that's part of the fun of photography. It's not just shooting, but the actual creating the image that I see in my head. Um, right, right, right. So, and that that definitely that definitely comes from. My guess that comes from what you mentioned before, making something out yeah. of nothing. You mm -hmm. want to build on what you've already started yeah, with. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in you. the camp of photographers that I want to create something. Um, 
I get upset when people say it's got to be straight out of camera. Um, I don't get upset, but it just kind of ticks me off a little bit because when someone says they want to be straight out of camera, I don't think I, I understand what they're saying, but I don't think they quite understand exactly what that means because uh, especially mm -hmm. now with digital, uh, what white balance do you have? What lens did you use? Did you use any lights? You're you're doing stuff that's not out of camera by doing all right. of those things. Right. And then what software you use and how you process it um, initially means it's not straight out of camera. So I'm not sure. What well, even importing it, right. Even when you import it, some things yeah. happen, you know, with certain softwares, yeah. So you know, that, that yeah. change it a little bit or whatever, yeah. too. So I... I yeah, don't you love I enjoy happens? the the creating something, and so my my images, uh, the 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 raw file, the negative or whatever you want to call it, uh, is my is my jumping off part point. That's like almost like a blank canvas, and then I create something right. from that. Mm -hmm. At least try oh. to. <laughs> I want. <laughs> I want to take a short break to remind everybody that PhotoFocus has launched its own community. Head over to PhotoFocus.com, click on the community link in the menu to join exclusive conversations, events, and you get to hang out with Lori. Yay. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> That's the best part. Come on. <laughs> of course it is. I can, I can't leave that out. I can't leave that part out. Um, <laughs> um, so, Scott, I have one more question for you before we dive into your right. photos. Um, you... I've noticed something, and I'm curious if you think about this when you're photographing, but um, do you tend to lean towards, in your color work, do you tend to lead, lean towards certain colors in your work? Um, n not that comes to mind. Um, I, have, I've, I, I'm, I have a tendency to like the blues, colors like that, um, but also I, I know I do a lot of autumn stuff where it's really reds and gold, so... Um, <clears throat> I, I, again, it just depends on how I feel at the time. I think recently I've been doing a lot more blues um, or greens and stuff like that. But uh, now that it's fall, who knows? It might go other direction with that. Um, so, yeah, it. I think that's one of the things when I have to shoot, uh, when people ask me to shoot events with people or something like that, uh, and there's like 300 images I don't think of doing color correction for that many images at the same time. Um, You're thinking each, each image, each individual so, image at that point. Uh, sometimes yeah. it's difficult for me, especially when I'm shooting in different lighting conditions in one event is how do I make all those things look the same? Cause I don't ever make anything look the same. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Let's dive in to your photos. Right. Let me know. You should be able to see that oh, yeah. already, right? Okay, so um, I like to start with what caught my attention about this. Um, a few years ago at Photo Plus Expo in New York City, I attended a lecture from that Ben Folds, oh, yeah. the musician, mm -hmm. was doing. He happens to be a Sony artisan, and um, he, a lot of his talk was about and it really, it really changed my way of thinking about it. And, and I, I realized I have a lot of photos like this in my collection too. But um, a lot of his talk was about natural family moments are not you making your child look at the camera and say cheese. It's your right. child staring out the window at whatever's there and photographing them how it was at that moment in their lives. Um, and in, in Ben Fold's case, it, he showed examples of him on the tour bus and his kids were looking out of the bus window, wherever city they were driving through. And that caught my attention because this is, this is that, this is, uh, I don't know, is that, is that yeah, your child, your but that, that, that's your son. So this is a natural moment that you'll yeah. never get again. And you captured it perfectly. And I love this photo, the framing, every, the, the tones. Yeah, that's great. Every part yeah, of it. This one was, was uh, this is a, a parking garage across from the Downer Theater on uh, um, Downer Street in Milwaukee. Uh, we go there all the time. It's like a four, I think it's four or five floors. Uh, and my son likes to go up on the top and look and then go down and hit every floor and go look at the window. And so I've been wanting to get this shot for a long time and have never been able to get it just the way I wanted it. And this was just... The light was good. Um, 
he stood in the right place. I didn't do, I mean, he that's where he was standing. I didn't actually tell him to, to stand any differently. Yeah. yeah. Move yeah. over to the left a little. Uh, it, just, it just happened. <laughs> um, and yeah. obviously um, it was a wide angle. So I had to correct a lot of the perspective on that. And I cropped um, on both sides to, to give it this, I, I thought with the square window, <clears throat> it needed yeah. a square crop. <clears throat> And I just like the yep. way it flowed. And I didn't even realize it until after I had shot it and processed it, that the uh, him standing on one side and the light pole on the other gives a nice uh, balance, balance there yeah. to it. Yeah. And um, I did a lot of uh, uh, dodging and burning uh, with different uh, layer effects um, to really focus what I wanted you to see. Right, right like the light on you know, his... The light on his head and back and like the shadows mm -hmm. and the light on the wrinkles of his shirt are like what makes you mm -hmm. look at him. Yeah, you know? I, I toyed with doing this in color or black and white. And very early on, I decided black and white because the uh, the marquee is yeah. is uh, like a maroon and green color. Um, his, jack his jacket is blue. Um, all the the uh, posters on the in the front of the, the theater had color in it, um, and on top of that, it, I was at a pretty high ISO, I believe. Um, so there was a lot of no noise in it. So I said, "Well, make it black and white." Black and white has green, so <laughs> I can cover up the noise that I got. From yeah, it, in a photo like this, I think color would be yeah. distracting. Definitely. In the black and white, you're you're getting right to yeah. the story here. Yep. Um, right to the nitty the nitty gritty. Um, I, it's kind of funny. I just realized it now too. But if you were like step away, see if you step away, you zoom out. Here, look. Oh, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm in the wrong thing. Hold on. Let's do this. It kind of looks like a dark Polaroid, and he's right? literally standing on the yeah. on the bottom of the Polaroid, looking oh, wow. at That's the photo. Cool. I never thought about right? that. That's. It is. Yeah. Um, I thought that was pretty neat. I just that realized that cool, now. Oh, cool that, observation. There's a. Yeah. There's a. Uh, yeah. a a com composition challenge for me is to find some old polarized and stick it in this shot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Let's move on to the next cool. one. So what caught me, what caught my attention about this one first was the colors, but, but then uh, also that there's like sort of this portal into whatever's going on in the woods. And um, I also like that it's kind of got this painterly um, sort of texture to it as well. So, I'm curious what the story is behind this one. Uh, what's going on here? Where is this? <laughs> and and uh, what did you do to um, sure. editing wise to make it to give it this? This is the look? Uh, beginning of the trailhead at the Seven Bridges uh, um, Trail at, in Grant Park in South Milwaukee. It's right along the lake. Uh, south Milwaukee is south of Milwaukee, so <laughs> it's an actual town called <laughs> South Milwaukee. Um, <laughs> And there are actually seven bridges on this trail, and this is this is the main bridge, and um, this is a little structure. It's got the I can't remember exactly what the saying is, and I can't read it on my screen. But uh, um, there's a, uh, a saying on this side, on the other side, as you leave, there's another saying. I, I see. So, yeah, so oh, yeah, this one says, uh, "Enter this wild wood and view yeah. the haunts of nature." Um, it's I've I was I've shot this different ways many times uh this time i was out there in in autumn and i have to say that uh the leaves were not as red and gold as i wanted <laughs> so i made it that way <laughs> oh um, interesting but uh, i was like this shot the light was it was overcast to a degree it looks like there's a little bit of sun in there but uh i, I processed it to try to um make the contrast as, as flat as possible and still get some of the, the darks in there. Um, I used Topaz Impression on this. I think this was right when Impression had just come out, and so I was going crazy with it. Um, and honestly, with the, my D700, there are times where uh, it's not as sharp as I want it to be. And so instead of just throwing the image away, I said, well, Let's make something out of it. So I had the painterly effect to kind of cover up some of the the, uh, the softness and the um, chromatic aberration that I might get with the lens that I was using. Um, but you know, it, okay, I'm still creating something that I that I wanted. So it, it's not like I'm. It's a cop out. It's right. I wanted the image to look this way. 
Right. You know, it certainly right. would be great to have a tack sharp yep. and all that, but to me, it wouldn't be as interesting. Um, no, and, and scenes like this lend themselves to that sometimes, you know, it makes it more magical looking or, you know, a little more, yep. you know, wistful instead of being, you know, not everything has to be sure. a tack sharp photo, you know, it's art. Yeah, I believe I used yep. the... Uh, then there's, there know, is no I, I wrong answer. I use the, there's, right. There's no wrong answer. I use it. the Nick effects to create the... Yeah. Um, there's a... I think there's a... Uh, one of their... It's, well, it used to be... I think they just changed it. I think it's called foliage now, which actually doesn't doesn't change the oh, leaves yes, as much yes. as it used to uh, in the newest version. Interesting. But yeah, I on images like this, okay. I will go it- in and uh, I use... Um, Layers like, uh, um, sorry, my cat is making some noise. He's on the other side of the door. Um, uh, exposure, curves, levels, and we'll um, dodge and burn certain areas. So I'll go in and actually, where it's darker in there, I'll go in with a brush and darken it more to bring out the contrast rather than doing a, an overall um, global oh, thing. I do it in right. pieces, just as you would do in the dark room, you know, with a little dodge right. tool, which is usually a, a paper clip with some tape on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, I'm a big uh, fan of local adjustments over, over global adjustments mm-hmm. whenever possible. Um, sometimes like, like if you were doing a, 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 an event and with a whole bunch of people and you wanted to knock out the editing fast, of course, global mm-hmm. will be much faster to do, but um but there, yeah, I mean, when it comes to art, like something like that you think about each and every photo individually, it makes sense to take your time and really touch it up the way you mm-hmm. see it in your head. So the last two photos I okay. want to talk about at the same time because there's a, um, there's uh, something similar about the two, even though one has color, one doesn't. So this photo, obviously, it's a beautiful, uh, colorful leaf, right? Right. But... There's another photo, which is this one. Do you see that one now? That's one of my favorites. Okay. So this one, a feather, obviously not a leaf. It's a feather. It's white. It's on a white background. But there's something similar between these two photos, and that is the shadow Mm -hmm. and the light. Um, They're very directional. They're very soft, right? I'll go back to the first, the leaf photo. I am curious, uh, and, and what caught my attention, you've got a bunch of photos that are sort of in this style. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm wondering, are you taking the time to create the light and shadows? Or are you finding these objects and then moving into a different... So like you, you found the leaf outdoors, you move to a, somewhere else where you see the shadow and you're just adjusting there? Or are you actually like, you know, creating the light? The answer is yes. <laughs> uh-huh, interesting. I have I I want to guess because I think the leaf um and the feather are he did both different ways. That is correct. And I think the leaf I think the leaf might have been found like that. And uh, the the feather maybe you positioned and put the light where you wanted it. They are the the both objects are positioned where I want them. Uh so the leaf obviously was I that this both these were shot indoors. Uh okay. the leaf was this is the light from our kitchen window. And so I have a big piece of foam core uh, that's white that I stuck in front of the window and, and actually was on top of the trash can because that was the only place I could get the light right. Um, <laughs> and so I, I placed that to, to so the, the, the shadows and the light were such a way. Uh, the leaf w- uh, was shot with a flashlight. I mean, the uh, the feather okay. was shot with a flashlight. The feather, okay. Right. Um, I, I mean, I... I've got a couple flashes that, that, that sometimes I like using the flashlight. I can. It's easier to maneuver it's it where you maneuver. want it. Uh, I can see it in camera because uh, with a flash, you need to do it. And, oh, okay. That's too bright. So I'm going to dial down the, the, or move the flash or whatever. This way I can see it. Now it was a long exposure. Um, so when I'm doing these, I have to, this was in the winter. And so I had to make sure that the heater was off. So it didn't turn on while I'm shooting this and the feather blow across the table or something. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, go ahead. Are, are you diffusing the flashlight that you use? Yes. Like, are you adding a little diffusion? Yeah. To I've just okay. got a, it's the, uh, when you get prints from some places, they have these little 
styrofoam foamy things that they put the paper, yes. the, the prints in. Yep. And I just layer a couple of those. Yeah. Interesting. Um, cool. Sometimes I, I actually, I don't have it near me, but I created a, a diffuser out of cardboard and some white paper that I put the flash behind and it works really well. And uh, that way I don't have to go buy a soft box or something like that. I can <laughs> use what's there. I mean, that's the beauty of shooting at home and doing, I'm not in a studio where I'm shooting people that I can just use whatever I have. Experiment. And it's, right. a, it's a great way to experiment with things too. You like, people don't always think about that. And I always joke about being like MacGyver, but that's the mm -hmm. way, you know, but that's how it works. Yeah. Right. It's like, what happens if I use this little whatever? And, and it's, it's amazing sometimes the results you get mm -hmm. just by, you know, trying something. Yeah. The, I, yeah. I'm, I don't remember exactly with the leaf, but I think I don't, I don't think I shot more than about eight or 10 shots of that to get it just right. The feather, I probably have three or 400 shots of that feather. Um, <laughs> or had, I, I think I got rid of a lot of them because I was experimenting with color gels and uh, white balance and where the flashlight was and where the, the camera was and a, a whole bunch of stuff. But I mean, that's the beauty is something like this. I have an image in mind and I just, I shoot a whole bunch until I get it to where I want it. And then usually in while I'm shooting, I know, okay, that's the, that's the image. So that that's fantastic. Um, I, I love that you're, you're sort of thinking outside the box to, um, to create, you know, what you're visualizing in your head to, um, and the beauty is, I mean, like you said, if the heater came on that, you know, that might blow away, but otherwise you can take your time and really fine tune it, polish it up. Um, get your, your, mm -hmm. your shadows the way you want it, get the exposure correct, all that stuff, the framing. Um, it's really, really great stuff. Um, so I have one more question. For I you. think yeah. taking, go ahead. Oh, sure. Go ahead. No, I only, I was going to yeah. say taking the time is, is, uh, is important when you're shooting, yeah. you know, with the digital cameras, people are so, you know, they can shoot two or three shots and move on to the next two, two or three shots or whatever. If you sit yeah. down and wait and just, take it in and relax a little bit. I think you're going to get better shots. Yeah. I, I, whenever I, whenever I'm teaching photographers, I always teach them to, to pretend that their digital memory card is film that right. obviously mm -hmm. you can keep shooting beyond 36 or 24, but right. you know, pretend that and you're that costs you like five bucks for a shot yes. or whatever it is to develop. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and when yeah. I do that, when I have people, I tell them to just put their camera down for a while because people don't do that either. Yeah. So they, they're, yep. they're like mm -hmm. reacting to what they see instead of taking it in and looking for compositions or looking for subjects and in, instead of, yeah. you know, just picking up the camera right away and reacting to what it, whatever it is they're seeing. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Like it's, it's that, I feel like there's only two instances where this can't be done. One is like a sports event, right? Right. Where, but it, no, because you you're going to miss something. Miss it, you're obviously, done, right? yeah, 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 right. And and the other would be a I'll wait for him to make the right. perfect catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that one all over again. Everybody start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. You 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 you. I missed the grand slam. I didn't mean to. Right. Um, yeah. um, Can we do that yeah. again? <laughs> the, the other one would be you know not all the time at weddings, but parts of weddings right oh yeah right you can't right. miss right no so, I, I, right um right yeah yeah but, but really for the most part yeah, otherwise <laughs> right again yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah um uh, the taking the time is is important yeah. i i just think if you don't do that i mean you think about how many images you look at and you think if that photographer had stepped yeah. one step to their left that would have been yep. a better yeah. shot and i'm thinking if you're taking your time you would have stepped all the way around yeah. your subject <clears throat> to know which what your good angle yep. is so. exactly yeah um laurie do you have any questions for scott before we get to the last um, question i don't think so i think you actually talked about something that i was thinking about and, and how your graphic design stuff that you've brought into your photography and we we already talked about that so um cool. you know i was able to actually go see scott's work hanging up in a coffee shop in milwaukee a couple weeks ago so it's nice. nice to be able to, it's nice They're to be, oh, awesome. Now. It's nice to see that though. I, yeah. I you know, it's yeah. nice to be yeah. able to go and, and, and actually I enjoy always supporting people that I know, you know, and, and when I can, you know, and if it means just visiting their shop and posting on social or whatever, you know, I, I like to do that. I like yeah. to see it out in the world. <laughs> For sure. We need more yes, art in the world. That's true. Very true. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so you might have already answered this in the last uh, in the the last little bit, but um, my last question for you, as we asked everybody, is: Can you share a tip for photographers about a technique or equipment that you want to share? Well, uh, taking the time is is important. Uh, for me, I think one of the biggest things is if you really want to get good at photography, is shoot every day. Mm. Um, I discovered about six years ago, I did a 365 project and some of my images that are hanging at, at the, the coffee shop here, uh, and some of my favorite images were taken during that 365 project where I was shooting and processing every day. Um, there were days when I didn't do that. And so I had something in the can, but, uh, getting out yeah. and shooting something every day, especially without a thought of what you're going to shoot that day, just let it happen will make you a better photographer because you'll learn to see things differently. Yeah. I'm, I just started one October 1st. So this is what, 19 days in, <laughs> whatever it is. A um, uh, lot of lot of images to go, but I've, I'm already happy with what I'm doing. Uh, and I think I've already, I feel like I'm, I've moved up a notch in, in my, my skill set just by That's doing awesome. something every day. You know, I, I feel like yeah. uh, the, this, what I'm about to say has come up a couple of times on the show, but um, I think it's important for people to realize that, yes, you should be using a camera every day and, and practicing, but you don't have to use a DSLR every day. You could use right. the phone that's in your pocket as your way of practicing. All you got to do is install an app that gives you control. And now you literally like, hate the Halide app, my absolute favorite camera app ever. Um, I can control every aspect of the phone's camera system like it's a DSLR. And I don't need to carry around mm -hmm. my DSLR every, or my, you know, my mirrorless every day um, like I used to. So uh, the yeah. best camera you have right. is the one you have <laughs> yep. with you. Yep. Without a <laughs> doubt. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, Scott, thank you so much uh, for, for joining. You shared earlier, but if you can share one more time, the best place for everybody to find you, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, the best place would be scottnorrisphotography.com. I'm all over the place on Flickr and Instagram and Facebook and everything else, but that's the best place to, to get the best of my work. Awesome. We'll be sure to get all this into the uh, the show notes. Right, it goes and, in the notes. Uh, it goes in the article that yeah, gets posted. The end the article. Nice. So um, again, thank you for joining. Thank you, everybody, for, for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.